Welcome to the Lutheran Church of the Good Shepherd in Olympia, Washington, where welcome and hospitality are an important part of who we understand ourselves to be as a community of faith. The Apostle Paul urges us to welcome one another just as Christ has welcomed us. The Lutheran Church of the Good Shepherd welcomes all people, the poor and the rich, the young and the old, people in all relationships, people of all abilities, people of all sexual orientations and gender identities, people of all nations and ethnic backgrounds. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Good morning and welcome to worship on the first day of Season of Creation. My name is Reverend Aaron Boffman. I'm the pastor of the Lutheran Church of the Good Shepherd in Olympia, Washington. Today, as we begin the Season of Creation, we start here in the forest. Today I'm coming to you from the Eagle Scout Chapel, and we will be worshiping out in the forest. So I encourage you today, or maybe sometime this week, to find your own time to experience the forest near your home as well. We will celebrate today among the living trees, the ferns and forests, and all the forest life in this living sanctuary. We also celebrate the tree of life that is at the center of all sanctuary, a tree that symbolizes Christ. Today also we celebrate God's work, Our Hand Sunday, and this day is an opportunity to celebrate with all of the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America, one church freed in Christ to serve and love our neighbor. Service activities that we'll do together offer an opportunity for us to explore one of our most basic convictions as Lutherans, that all of life in Jesus Christ, that is every act of service and every daily calling and every corner of life, flows freely from a living, daring confidence in God's grace. You work every day to make your community a better place. And so today, we are excited to continue to do this work together in 2020. What we've done this year is we've been packing Lutheran World Relief School Kits, and we've been collecting supplies over the past few weeks. In the name of the Creator, the Fountain of Life, the Name of Christ, the Pulse of Life, in the Name of the Spirit, the Breath of Life, we gather today. Amen. Christ, we come into your presence today, all from different places, but we still come today to worship in this sanctuary called Earth. We come to a planet filled with your presence, quivering with forests, vibrating the land, pulsating in the wilderness, shimmering in the rivers. God, reveal yourself to us in this place and show your face 
and all of creation. As we begin worship this morning, let us now take time to invite the forest to worship with us. Mountains and pines, quivering ferns and glistening moss. We quiver with the trees as they shake before God, with tempests and tornadoes hit and raging winds invade the forest. We invite tall trees to celebrate life, tall timber where lichen finds their home. We invite the forest nightlight, nightlife to sing, green tree frogs and timid moths, ancient owls and swirling bats. We join with the fauna of the forest in praising God. Lastly, I now name, ask you to name aloud in your hearts or on the chat here live forest creatures that we call to worship today. Again, you can write those names into the chat as we gather together. We invite all of these creatures to join us together in worship today. Now let us continue our worship by taking a moment for confession. Today we remember and confess that we have become alienated from earth and that we have violated the forests in our garden planet. We are sorry. We have been thoughtless and greedy. We have ignored the destruction of our forest, the death of old growth forests, and species breathing their last. Dear forest, we say together, we are sorry. We are sorry. We are sorry. Christ hears your confession from the cross and forgives your sins against the forest. Christ teaches us to love earth and return to earth as our home. I speak for Christ. I invite you to come home to earth by rejoicing in the forest. Shalom, shalom. We are coming home. Amen. Christ, have mercy. As we come home to earth, wherever that may be, Christ, have mercy. As we seek to love our home, wherever that may be, Christ, have mercy. As we seek to care for our planet, Christ, have mercy. Glory to God. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace with all creation. The prayer of the day. Let us pray. God, our creator, whose glory fills our planet, help us to discern your vibrant presence among us, especially in the mysteries of the forest. Help us empathize with your forest creatures who are suffering. Lift our spirits to rejoice with the forest and all the creatures of the forest. In the name of Christ, who reconciles and renews all things in creation. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Romans, chapter 14, Accepting Diversity in the Community of Faith. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day 
observe it in honor of the Lord. Also those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God. While those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the living and the dead. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us will be accountable to God. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may also be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him, and as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all of his possessions, for payment to be able to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of the slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii and seized him by the throat and said, Pay what you owe. 
and his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. But his fellow slaves saw what had happened. They were greatly distressed. And they went and reported it to their Lord, all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that the debt that you had pleaded with me. Should you not have mercy on your fellow slave, as I have mercy on you? And in anger his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you, if you do not forgive your brother and sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So as we begin the season of creation today, out here in the forest, I wanted to start by sharing with all of you some of my favorite theologian when, theologians when it comes to the earth. First is the Reverend Dr. Lisa Dayhill, one of my professors from Trinity. Lisa Dayhill has come to writing some amazing pieces about the importance of baptizing in our local watersheds and the importance of understanding our place as Christians in the environment. Another is my undergraduate advisor, Mallory McDuff. Now, Dr. McDuff might not be a typical theologian, but she's now written multiple books about the importance of religious communities and the environmental movement. And without them being part of that movement, how the environmental movement has little future. Another important theologian to me, another one you might not think of, is Pete Seeger, the famous musician who put together the Clearwater Festival in New York. Pete Seeger was instrumental in cleaning up the Hudson River and bringing awareness to people about the importance of having clean waterways and protecting their local forests and ecosystems. And lastly, one that many of you may know is Rachel Carson. Rachel Carson did amazing work with publishing the first information to come out about DDT and how it was detrimental to the environment, especially songbirds and other larger birds of prey. But one thing about all of these theologians is that they didn't start necessarily at the beginning of an understanding of this important connection that we have to the earth. Each of them came from different backgrounds and came to this understanding through research, through study, through exploration, through spiritual discipline, and more. And so often, the place where we are at now may not be where we're at in the future on our spiritual journey. And this this is why it's so important that we are able to offer each other grace, that we are able to forgive one another, not just seven times, but 77 times, like it calls us in our gospel today. Jesus knew the importance of this. If you remember from last week's message, we talked about how Jesus was educating all of us on the importance of realizing that all of us will sin. And so there must be a way for reconciliation. Now, today, Jesus is coming to the point of sometimes you just have to offer grace. And sometimes that's not just seven times, but 77 times. I like to think of grace being like a forest. Think about how all of these trees that are here, they offer us grace, even though we might have, generation after generation, disrespected the fact that they are the ones who bring us clean air. They are the ones that have purified the earth for us and have been able to cool our planet. Regardless of that, they still offer us grace. They are still trees that are standing here today doing an amazing things for us and for all of creation. This is so important for us to realize as we have so much grace that we need to offer each other. 
especially now that Good Shepherd is in the process of redevelopment. There are so many things that we will come to realize along this faith journey that we need to offer each other grace for. One time a professor explained to me how in Buddhism there's this understanding that certain species, certain beings are higher than others. Each of them might be closer to reaching, let's say, nirvana. So the idea is, is that when you're reincarnated, each time that you're reincarnated, you become closer to that sense of heaven. And in traditional Buddhist belief, the highest level that you could be at is being human, like you and me. Well, one Buddhist scholar has challenged this idea and believes that perhaps we've had it backwards all along. What he believes is that it's actually the opposite. Perhaps it's the trees that are the closest to the divine. Perhaps they are the closest to heaven on earth. Think about it for a moment. Is it not us who have to be told to not just give grace seven, but 77 times? Is it not us that continually need to be reminded to reconcile with those around us? Is it not us that need to come to worship and offer our confession and hear our absolution? Whereas the forest, the trees are gathered here together, knowing that there is grace freely flowing from God and that they are called to share that grace with each other and with all of creation. Perhaps it is the forest that is the closest to God. Perhaps that's also why so many of us feel so close to God when we are out in nature. In closing today, I would encourage you to take time today or tomorrow or sometime this week to take a walk out in a forest near you. Especially since I know in Olympia there are some amazing forests to explore. Perhaps one of my favorite places on earth now is the Quinault Rainforest, about an hour and a half away from all of you, with beautiful big trees that are there still standing today. So I encourage you to go and fill, be filled with grace so that you can share it with others as Christ calls us all to do, especially in this time that we need it the most. And know, that things might be different going forward. I heard this week that many of the forest fires that are happening in California, Washington, Oregon, and Colorado, and other places, they are natural in many ways. And at one time, these forest fires were helpful to the earth, a cleansing, if you will. Unfortunately, with our climate changing, many of these will not be able to have the forest regenerate back to what it once was. Research that's been recently done by ecologists show that these forests that have been decimated by fire over the past 10 years didn't come back like how people once thought. Instead, these forests returned to prairies or other types of trees that they didn't expect. The thing is, is nature was still able to reclaim, but it was different than what people thought. And that is what we are walking into. Things will be drastically different. But if we are able to offer grace, like the forest offers us grace, then we'll be able to share that with each other and to know that Christ offers you and me and all of creation, that grace, can bring us the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, and most importantly, hope. Blessings to all of you this week. And remember to get outside and enjoy the forest. Amen.
Let us affirm our faith together in the words that are from the Uniting Church of Australia. We believe that God creates all things, renews all things, and celebrates all things. We believe Earth is a sanctuary, a sacred planet filled with God's presence, a home for us to share with our kin. We believe that God became flesh and blood, became a piece of Earth, a human being called Jesus Christ, who lived and breathed and spoke among us, suffered and died on a cross for all human beings and for all creation. We believe that the risen Jesus is the Christ at the core of creation, reconciling all things to God, renewing all creation, and filling the cosmos. We believe the Holy Spirit renews life in creation, groans in empathy with a suffering creation, and waits with us for the rebirth of creation. We believe that with Christ we will rise, and with Christ we will celebrate a new creation. The Prayers of the People Drawn together in, com in the compassion of God, we pray for the Church, the world, and all those in need. You welcome us when we are weak in faith. Uphold your Church throughout the world. Make it a place of welcome. Strengthen faith through Bible studies and Sunday schools, confirmation classes, and youth ministries. Nurture new ministries of education and growth. Bless bishops, pastors, and deacons for their work in this unprecedented time. We pray especially for Reverend Aaron as he begins outreach to youth through online devotions. The heights of the heavens show us the vastness of your steadfast love. Make our spirits sensitive to the cries of creation, cries for justice from the hills and the trees. Lord, we thank you for the majestic forests that grace our planet. Give us clean air to breathe, providing safe habitats for your woodland creatures, and giving us restful places to visit and enjoy the peace that only you can give us. We pray with urgency for the protection of our forests as wildfire season is upon us. Sustain and protect firefighters who are fighting wildfires in Washington and other western states, especially California. Help the firefighters to bring these fires under control so that acres of forest and grassland can be preserved. Bless also the workers who will plant new trees as part of reforestation projects. Where human selfishness has brought ruin and destruction, we look to you to heal, renew, and redeem your world. Make your ways known to the nations. Guide the United Nations and other organizations that seek reconciliation across national borders. Show families, neighborhoods, and nations how to welcome diversity while sharing common ground. Preserve our election season from abuse and rancor. God of our homeland, visit the American cities that are addressing local racism. Stand with both protesters and police that civil society may be preserved and improved. Bring both healing and justice to our land. As we face natural disasters, divisive political climates, and international conflicts, we pray that where hearts are fearful and constricted, grant courage and hope. Where anxiety is infectious and widening, grant peace and reassurance. 
where impossibilities close every door and window, grant imagination and resistance, where distrust twists our thinking, grant healing and illumination, where spirits are daunted and weakened, grant soaring wings and strengthened dreams. Bring healing and justice wherever harm is dealt. Provide vindication for all who are oppressed. Free victims of human trafficking and forced labor. Deliver all who are bound by debt. Feed all who are hungry and guard refugees fleeing famine, poverty, and war. Heal the sick, especially those we name here before you. Jim, Jack, Michelle, and Tova. Teach us to forgive. Remind us that you do not always accuse us. Still our tongues when we are tempted to pass judgment and argue over opinions. Make this congregation a community of mercy for one another and for all our neighbors. Whether we live or whether we die, we are yours. We thank you for all the faithful witnesses who put on the Lord Jesus Christ and who now dwell with your, in your heavenly kingdom. Keep us faithful until the day we rejoice in your majesty with them. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. New Zealand Lord's Prayer. Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Life Giver, Source of all that is and that shall be, Father and Mother of us all, Loving God in whom is heaven. The hallowing of your name echo through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and testing, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. Trees
everybody. Due to the air quality because of all the smoke, we're postponing both the school kit assembly and the columbarium raffle. These aren't canceled, they're just postponed. We'll have dates to be determined, but don't come to the church today. Well, I mean, you can, but nobody will be there. All right, here are the rest of the announcements. Bye, guys.